there are only a few things that are constant with, with successful people. And one of those that I've noticed is this relentless drive. If you're relentlessly pushing to be better, you're gonna end up in a good spot, for sure. We are in a warehouse next to a railroad and an airport, Santa Clara University, and a gigantic pile of dirt. <laughs> There's 38 million people in California, there's 325 million people in the US, and there's 1.1 billion people on Earth that don't know where the next meal's coming from. So we named the company 1.1, because that's what I care about, and that's the issue that I'm pushing to solve, eventually. We are going to be the first company in the world to grow aeroponically grown specialty crops and automate the entire process. Grew up in Wheelers Hill in Australia, my primary school, my mother was a teacher at. My father was a high school teacher at the high school adjacent. The only thing that was separating the two schools were six clay tennis courts. So that's where the value of education came in and obviously the tennis came in as well. I was gonna to go to a very good school in Orlando and then a couple of unfortunate events that were out of my control occurred and then that position was basically withdrawn. So after a couple of weeks, I decided to take an opportunity at a community college in Fresno. I spent a couple of years working on my tennis, figuring out who I wanted to become, technically who I was, that it wasn't a very active process at the age of 19 to 21. We won the state championship two years in a row. I won the state championship individually. The coach from Santa Clara University fortuitously contacted me and said, come in, play on our courts, tour the school, let us know what you think. He liked the way I played. He liked my attitude, I think, more than the way I played. And he brought me in on scholarship. As soon as I was admitted to the school, they admitted me into the Arts and Sciences Department. And I was interested in nanoengineering. I walked into the engineering school and said, I don't have a physics background, I don't have a math background or an engineering background, but I can work hard. Purely through conversation, I convinced the Dean of Engineering and the Associate Dean of Engineering to admit me to the engineering school, luckily. Mech 144, Smart Product Design, was my favorite class at Santa Clara University. The lasting change coming out of Smart Product Design, the class through Dr. Kitts, is that entrepreneurial mindset of thinking about what the customer needs, what the consumer wants beyond what they say they want, and how you can take your knowledge and the knowledge of others, accumulate it, and then apply it in a different way. After my first year at the Maker Lab, he brought me into the actual robotic systems lab, which was kind of a big stepping stone for me at the time. He brought me in as a keen entrepreneur to not only do work at the robotic systems lab, but to have it customer facing. The position gave myself and a partner of mine an opportunity to, instead of developing a technology that seems cool, that could potentially have an impact, we looked for where we could impact and then created the technology. And that's something that didn't really exist before in the curriculum with engineering until Keen gave us that opportunity. One of the most important sayings to me is the fact that we're standing on the shoulders of giants. It's a humbling fact. The idea that you can take all of these other people's ideas and notions and inventions, accumulate them in different ways, tweak them in different ways, and then send that product out to the greater society, you know, is there a better thing to do in life? I don't know. From my perspective, that's exactly what I want to do. The potential of this business to actually feed people is really important to me. The business had to be two things. It had to have the capacity to become very, very large and international and it had to have the capacity at the same time to be improving people's lives in whatever way that happened to be. If you can walk into a community of people that you don't know, and then they come up to you and say, you've helped these people, you've improved these people's lives. But what else is there in life that can be as satisfying as a random person showing their gratitude for something you've done? I'm happy to dedicate the next 40 years of my life just to get a thanks from someone who I don't know. So you have this engineering curriculum with this vast amount of knowledge, but how do you use it? From my perspective, the most efficient way to use it is to apply an entrepreneurial mindset to that knowledge base and take that, accumulate as much of it as you can, and then expand it and explode it throughout the world. 
one, the fastest way to improve who you are and what you're doing in life. And two, it's the best way to add to society. It's that classic archetypal story where you start from nothing and then build a gigantic company and then you have the ability to look back and see and treasure the fact that you started from so little and then became so much. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, that's right, that's right. This is my garage, that's right. Yeah.